Martin Welsh, uh, the author of Train Spotting, joins me now. Uh, really good to talk to you today. Uh, so we've just got these figures about drug deaths in Scotland. Uh, they are falling, which is really, really good news. But as Connor pointed out, there still uh, over a thousand people dying of drugs in, in Scotland in 2022. One of the highest rates in Europe. Why do you think drug deaths in Scotland remain high? Uh, I think um, really because we always have. I mean, um, apart from the, you know, the when you when you don't have anything else, can the drugs win by default? And I mean, I remember being in my teens, and uh, you know, with all all the stuff, all the conversation would be about alcohol. Why have we got the highest alcoholism rates? Why have we got the highest alcohol deaths? And then it's just switched over to drugs. It's just a, a kind of um, an element of modern kind of life, really, and. Uh, it's, we, we, Scotland's always had a really bad relationship with intoxication. I mean, it, Robert Burns said, kind of whiskey and freedom gang together. And we've always sort of um, put kind of um, intoxication and the idea of being able to handle our drugs or handle our drink on a kind of um, a cultural pedestal. Uh, if, you, if you combine that with the, the, the kind of deep kind of systemic poverty that's existed, uh, and uh, the complete apathy of uh, government over the years, then you know you, you have this sort of thing. It's an ongoing thing, and while it's to be welcomed that the drug deaths have fallen significantly, it's it's, it's really the, the overwhelming kind of issue is that they are still the highest uh, or one of the highest rates in in the world. Well, indeed, you talk about government apathy. What would you like to see government do to, to try to, to reduce this trend? Uh, you know, it, well, there's a we, lot of we, look, we look at Glasgow and compare it to, to, to cities like Liverpool or, or Newcastle and there just doesn't seem to be that comparison. Well, I mean, again, we've, we've got all these cultural issues that relate to kind of Scotland's place in the world and Scotland's identity or, you know, or kind of lack of. Um, but you've also sort of, you know, there's, there's a, a kind of broader pattern that's, you know, that... Um, I mean, you have people, we have this kind of circus about Scotland's drug death, the kind of, you know, that everybody gets, starts pointing fingers at each other, and it seems to be people who won't do anything and people who can't do anything kind of pointing fingers at each other and blaming each other. And this is around, it's almost like a, a kind of uh, an annual sport that we have. Uh, so, I mean, really, I think that the, the, whole, the whole issue is priority at, at um, a kind of a national political level. I mean, I mean, nobody in their right mind is suggesting that Richie Sunak is in politics to help deprive people on, on Scottish uh, council estates, uh, you know, um, or, or schemes as we call them here. Uh, and, you know, I don't think that's kind of the high, high on the list of Keir Starmer's priorities either. I mean, there might be people, local politicians in Scotland, who want to, who want to make a difference, but they can't. They just don't have the. This is like a glorified town council here. It doesn't have the resources to do anything significant. Now, at the margins, as we've said, there have been a, there have been initiatives, and they have sort of helped and have reduced the deaths. And obviously, that is to be welcomed. But um, the, you know, the, they talk about like the train spotting generation and train spotting and all this kind of, um, but. That book was about uh, it was about the collapse of work and it was about the collapse of community and it's a you know drugs win by default when there's nothing else there's nothing else in the communities so what else are people going to do you know they're not going to go to college there's no investment in the communities there's no employment for people there is literally nothing else except drugs and again we have a, a bad cultural relationship with drugs in Scotland which compounds the issue. So t train spotting as it was, this this harsh, this brutal warning against the excesses of heroin. Uh, you know, you're saying you know the central character Renton chose them. You know, over you know as as in that famous monologue over middle class suburban. Do you think that choice has disappeared for many people in Scotland now? There is no yeah. The, people don't have that choice at all now. There is no choice. I mean, if you're living in a if you're living in a scheme. Um, you don't really have the choice. You know, there's no there's no avenues of social mobility left. Uh, there's no educational avenue. There's no economic avenue. There's no sort of uh, kind of um, employment avenue out of out of that kind of desperation. So, so many people. You know, all everything 
in a, in a housing scheme now is set up towards addiction, like kind of terrible fast food, kind of online pornography, um, sort of online gaming. Uh, the, you know, there is, there, it's like everything is done for cheap dopamine hits and cheap dopamine smashes and, and, and a, a short-term alleviation of pain. And that's all that drugs are, and that's how they're being used. They're being used for pain alleviation. And, when you th and a lot of these drugs come from the whole corporate system that we're in. They come from Big Pharma. And we've, we've, we've got into this uh, whole psychological kind of mentality that all we do is we medicate. And that comes right from the top down and that, goes right, that cuts right across every kind of class and every kind of social milieu. Uh, but it's more acutely felt uh, in, amongst people that have got no future, that feel they've got no hope and there's nothing else there for them other than what they what they the hanging around with their pals and getting kind of messed up on drugs. That's a compelling drama. That's the only thing that creates any kind of excitement and interest in life at all. Do you have any hope that that is going to change, that, that living a life around a dopamine hit for a lot of people in Scotland? Well, I mean, I, you know, the, the, the thing is that we're all tied to these mobile phones and we're kind of tied online and we're tied into a... We're tied into this, we're kind of techno serfs tied into these kind of cloud fiefdoms where we're just kind of creating content for um, a sort of, uh, basically a kind of, you know, American and Chinese kind of superpowers of, of, uh, of these, um, you know, of, of these big techno fiefdoms. So we're not in a great position really, you know, and I think that uh, governments have to get a grip on this and governments have to realise their power and they have to start to, to stop this insidious social engineering that's going on that's imprisoning people and it's limiting our choices and it's forcing us to accept just one economic neoliberal model uh, of the way that we live and this this model is just destroying people it's destroying the planet it's sucking all the wealth into the center uh, into this you know into the hands of a corporate elite who are kind of just as imprisoned with it by anybody else because they don't know what to do with it building helicopter pads and um, so yachts for, for very rich people isn't going to help people, uh, isn't going to help investment in housing schemes and isn't going to get people off drugs. Evan Welsh, really interesting to talk to you today. Thanks for, for braving the traditional Scottish weather as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you.